Hey, I'm Adam Cook. Welcome to the Bite Britain podcast, a show dedicated to interviewing the most successful restaurant owners in the UK, learning about what goes into their incredible menus, but more importantly, what it takes to run the successful restaurant in this day and age. Beetroot Sauvage is a well-being cafe and space in Edinburgh offering plant-based foods with a built-in wellness centre offering yoga and meditation and cookery classes. Opened in May 2018, the cafe has built a loyal local following whilst keeping true to its belief that true health combines wholesome nutrition with full body wellness, all backed by a supportive, like-minded community. Today, I have the founder with me, Marianne Martin. Marianne, welcome to the show. Let's start by hearing a little bit more about you personally and then perhaps you can explain a little bit more about this awesome concept that you've got in Beetroot Savage. Hi Adam, uh, it's lovely to speak to you. Um, so I'm Marianne, I'm a French born <laughs> UK resident. I've been living in Edinburgh for 21 years. Uh, I'm originally trained as a vet and I'm a, a huge foodie. I've always been a foodie ever since I was a kid. Um, and the concept about the restaurant is um, to, as you said, to have um, a holistic approach to well-being. Um, so combining nutrition and um, health for the body and the mind. So I run a um, 100% vegan cafe um, and wellness centre um, in, uh, in a beautiful location in Edinburgh, which uh, is, is a lot of space. We have a garden um, and um, and two wonderful spaces to, to accommodate what we do. Incredible. So <laughs> tell, us, tell me a little bit about what inspired you, because I think, I think what, what drew me to actually contact you um, about, about mm -hmm. this um, interview was the way that you've combined, you know, the, the sort of like the, the body and movement based wellness with, you know, obviously nutritional wellness. And I think that's two things which are, are really, really, um trending at the moment is obviously the plant-based wellness you know in terms of nutrition but you know also you know not not so much fitness as in like gym based fitness but lots of sort of like more spiritual and whole body based fitness things like you know yoga i, I saw you have things like osteopathy on there as well on your website that you mentioned mm -hmm. um just tell me about kind of what inspired you to kind of combine both of those things and and, and the idea okay. behind that yeah so i um my my story is i became a mother <laughs> at the age of 34 and um uh, at that point if, for anyone who's a mother out there they will have felt the need for extra support at that time it's a it takes a lot of energy to bring new human beings into the world it's something that's very underrated we just see it as yeah, completely exactly. normal but um <laughs> at that point in my life i felt i needed extra support and i started researching um, nutrition and the effects of that good nutrition could have on me and I really found that in in plant-based foods um, I think we also have this innate um, knowing inside ourselves which comes from us just being originally you know um, either nomadic or sedentary humans and originally we would have found our food in nature and we would have gathered and maybe hunted but we would have in, in innately known what it is that we need um, to feed ourselves to feed our bodies uh, you know perfectly um, and so just really this was combined with me um, finding yoga and finding meditation and these um, practices really helped me to to delve into a sort of non-violent approach to the world and to the self um, <clears throat> and, and coming from that really annoying that um, if we only feed ourselves good things that are good for us we and if we don't harm the world we can actually thrive um, and it's so it takes a little bit of awareness <laughs> a little bit of, of mindfulness really get into these things um, but everyone can do it it's literally accessible to everyone you don't need to be in a crisis situation like I was uh, to, to approach this. You can just literally um, experience it. Maybe you, you go for a weekend and only eat plants. Um, and that's actually what I did. I went to a conscious festival and was fed only vegan food and, and took part in a lot of uh, conscious practices um, like sound journeying and, and um, movement meditations and suddenly felt my energy levels rise up 
so high to a level I never never expected. Um, so yeah. self experience is really what what drove me to do this. Um, obviously backed up by research, and there's a lot of research out there you know, that's accessible on the net, and uh, you can literally now <laughs> teach yourself anything online. You can yeah, I mean, look up crazy. hundreds, yeah, yeah. hundreds of. I've taught myself podcasting, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or at least I'm trying. Exactly, <laughs> right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, no, um, I think the internet is an amazing space. You know, it really is. Yeah, and improving your your own health through nutrition is 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 so accessible. It's you know, we're so lucky to have access to, you know, hundreds and hundreds of ingredients that that can make us feel well. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I think I think these are really the things that inspired me most and you know basically my own my own, so your own self, journey, your, own, your own journey and your own experience yes. trying to trying to you know yes give that um opportunity to other people to kind of go through that, that exactly experience. yeah absolutely sharing that with others well um making that available as a space for people to come and and mm -hmm. tap into it yeah yeah i think it's amazing what's going on at the moment um the trends that i'm seeing in terms of um, like dietary choices you know probably even as close as like 10 years ago, you know, the, the things that got attention were the burgers, you know, the junk food, all that kind of stuff was, was seen as kind of like where, what everyone put on a pinnacle is like amazing food. And I think it's almost, almost feels like, I think part of that is because of the internet and the spreading of information. But so many people, I think, have gone down that road of, of you know, eating food that perhaps even in some cases was promoted as healthy you know there's lots of you know there's always like a processed shake that you can drink that's going to suddenly fix all of your gut issues or, or you know there's all these things that we see um and i yeah. think i think a lot of a lot of that has now been tried and a lot of it has failed and i think people are now looking back mm -hmm. back to nature to say well what what are we supposed mm -hmm. to be as, as humans you know and i think i think there's a lot there's a lot more trends that i see now certainly with restaurants certainly for successful restaurants where they are understanding that people are looking to, to take, you know, these plant-based or like non-processed whole food approaches to, you know, the way that they're eating. Um, and people are looking at food now mm -hmm. um, more like they used to as fuel rather than something mm -hmm. that just tastes good, you know. Um, yeah. And I think, you know, I think making sure that as a restaurant, especially in, in 2019, that you're taking notice of that, mm -hmm. um, whether, whether you're specifically, you know, inspired around that concept or you're just an everyday restaurant on a high street, you, know, you need to make sure that you're understanding the, the trends that these things are going in. And that's, that's kind of what really drove me to talk to, to you um, in particular, because I could see that you're kind of at the forefront of, of that. Um, and obviously your cafe's concept is pretty much based around that whole premise. But tell, I, want to, I want to learn a little bit more about your food. Um, so mm -hmm. where, I mean, what, I've, what I've seen is obviously, obviously it's plant-based food, so we understand the mm -hmm. concept behind plant-based and, and that obviously there's no animal products and all that stuff. But yeah. one of the things, I think one of the problems um, that the, I guess the plant-based food industry often faces is that people um, turn their nose up at it and, and think, oh, well, that's just boring food. It's all, you know, I, I used to hate vegetables when I was a kid, so, yeah, yes. it's really so I think there's a real challenge in being able to, to take that, that view and turn it around. And I, you know, yeah. I, I want to hear a little bit more about, about your food and about the inspiration behind it and how you've kind of delivered on that, really yeah yeah well i've i've always um i've always had a knack i would say just um when people came to eat my at my house you know they would always just leave a bit like blown away and i just didn't really understand i was like oh well they're just being nice you know it was like <laughs> okay they're just they're just friend they're just nice but literally i realized oh actually i do i do have a kind of magic i guess to put ingredients together um and even you know if it's something that wouldn't naturally appeal to you you'd actually leave feeling oh this is such a good combination so i think there is there's a bit of an art to it <laughs> and yeah. um just mastering flavors and i'm very big on textures and i think that's something that people don't realize they need to um, have an experiential feel of um, of food which goes beyond just taste it's it's um first it's visual so you you look at the food and if it yeah. doesn't look appealing if it if it looks drab or you know beige mm. or um mush you know you <laughs> what is not gonna very, you know, feel yeah. drawn to it of course there's habits and patterns that come on top of that so that might compound that but something that is very vibrant um something that you know where you can feel the energy coming out of the food naturally 
because it's fresh or because it's been put together in a way that appeals to all the senses. And obviously the first one is, is sight, so looking at the food. What does it look like? Does it look beautiful and vibrant? Um, to then the taste, obviously, combination of flavors, you know, things that um, are fully balanced. So on all the different um, five or six flavor palettes, if you think about it. So um, that's, that's yeah. the science of it for me. That's the sort of chemical um, combinations, which I guess is a, as a vet and a scientist originally, I, I love to look into that sort of thing. Um, you know, how are different taste buds in the different areas of our mouth and mm. our nose react That's to amazing all that these you, different you things. That's amazing that you think of it in that way. I mean, I, I enjoy cooking, <laughs> obviously, hence the, the podcast, but um, I don't, I've not really thought of it in that way of like trying to tick all of those different boxes. That's a really interesting yeah. way of looking at it. I guess that's the scientist. It, thing, right? <laughs> it is, it is a lot of the scientist, but then it's combining that with the, um, with the art, you know, it's it's not yeah. just the technique. It's no, you know, no, once you've mastered the technique, you go on to the art of it. Um, and then, yeah. really importantly for me, is texture. And I do think, uh -huh. you know, I mean, I see my children. You know, they go through phases of not liking certain textures or liking other textures, and it's just being introduced to all these different textures and combining them is really important. So, you know, everyone loves something that's crispy on the outside and soft on the inside because you've got contrast there. You've got yin and yang, and yeah. And so you can play with this and, and being playful with the food and experimenting with all its different qualities and characteristics is, I think, really the secret to really good cooking. And so I've gone from, you know, being a bit skeptical about, you know, what my friends were saying about my food to really understanding why they were saying that and, and then actually using that in my own um, cafe. So, yeah, yeah, just really working on that. Yeah, I mean, then... um, but <clears throat> Yeah, sorry. <laughs> no, I was sorry. I think there's, there's a bit of um, a bit of a delay on the line. But um, I was going to say one of the things that I saw as well is you, you guys have got a bit of a reputation for good cakes as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's uh, that's really interesting because what 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 um what's really interesting with the the baking industry and the, the cake industry is if you look at the recipes in the last um sort of ten years and I've I'm I'm an avid recipe reader. I literally read you know I read recipe books from cover to cover and I get like loads of recipe magazines mm -hmm. um, and I just read them <laughs> like you would read so a it book. Sounds, it sounds like you're really <laughs> putting a lot into the research and development side of the uh, yeah the menus. but it's a joy so, it's yeah. a ple it's a pleasure yeah. it's not well I think that's the important I really, thing really I think really that enjoy. is that is a really important point that I think anyone that wants to get into the food industry needs to really take a, um, take note of there because you know you have to be passionate about this stuff to be able to to drive forward with it, right? I think I think that is for sure. You know, a lot of people don't like cooking, <laughs> um, and it would be very hard for them yeah. to, to get the energy to do all of these things that you're talking about doing. Yeah, that's got you to you know yeah, having yeah, the amazing yeah. menus that you've got. So I think that's kind of a really really important point there. Um, that you know you, you do have to do put a lot of effort in behind the scenes to developing menus, developing your food, making sure that. You know, you understand what it is that people like, and looking at the, um, I guess, scientific side as well as the creative side. You know, two things that you really have to combine. I think it's just such an important point yeah, that you yeah. really have got to be passionate about whatever it is that, that you're doing, whatever business you're in. Um, you know, when that's food, you know, yes. <laughs> you really need to to do a lot to develop that menu. So, what are, what sort of um, do you do a lot of kind of ex experimental stuff and you when you, what's your I, I guess i'm trying to understand your creative process so if you come up with a, a really interesting dish what will you do will you, you'll try it, i guess at first at home maybe on some friends and then will you will you sort of like do a soft launch in the cafe to try out and get on customers how does it work <laughs> you'd be surprised <laughs> I think the, the I'm, I'm research sure. and the development is 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 very much um something that's happened before and then I'm very very intuitive and spontaneous and I think that's that's where my passion shines through is I don't I don't actually spend a long time testing things I literally when I developed the Buddha balls that we served in the restaurant it was because my chef at the time was away uh, for the weekend and so I ended up in the kitchen which is like my happy place so I was very happy um, but obviously I have to manage the business so I tend to be not in the kitchen um, and I just thought, ah, oh, you know, I'm bored with these salads they're doing all the time. I'm just going to, 
let's see what we've got. And I just looked at ingredients and I don't know if you remember that program. I don't know if it's still on because I don't watch TV anymore, but that Ready, Steady, Cook program <laughs> where they just literally have five ingredients and they put yeah. them together. And I do that. That's, that's like me looking at my fridge most evenings. <laughs> <that. laughs> like, but that's the best way because you do what you've got and then you can add on top of that. You can layer that later on. But if you work with what you've got, you can make the best out of it. You know, you, you have limited resources, but they're all great ingredients. And so I put together these Buddha balls and I was thinking about all these different things we talked about, you know, the flavors, the textures, the visual aspect. And I just literally put them together, put them out and they're super popular now. And it, so for me, there is a lot of research in the background, but then I'm very, very spontaneous with it. And I'll literally turn up one day, my pastry chef will be away and I'll be like, right, today I'm going to create a new cake and I'm just tapping into you know what's going on so well it's autumn now and someone just came and gave me loads of fresh apples from their garden and i'm just going to create a really beautiful Amazing. apple crumble cake and that's what i do and it just flies up the shelves <laughs> so i have this um i guess luck or i don't know intuition i would call it more um and yeah, i trust I mean, that and that's i think very important i think yeah i mean building on the point that you was making you know about um the plan is over you, you, at the end of the day you know you can you can plan all you like but you do have to take action and you have to put something out there you know and i think that's a, again a very important point yeah um that almost counters what we've talked yeah. about before to yeah. some extent but you you do have to actually do so you can plan the menu for years if you want but <laughs> until you actually get it out there you know, have, have, you, have you had i mean that sounds like apple crumble pie or sorry cake sounds amazing have you ever had any that perhaps didn't do so well or perhaps that you thought oh, well, you shouldn't have done that <laughs> um, I'm trying to think or is it just the fact no, that everything, you, everything that you create just does really well <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just very <laughs> lucky <laughs> I'm just very well, I don't lucky. think it's luck I, I think, think it's skill I think it's so <laughs> nice I'm just wondering because I'm thinking if I did that I'll, there's so many things I would try and most of them would probably be absolutely disgusting but I'm guessing it's really just down to having a, a good eye for, for what actually works a, right? yeah yeah, I guess, I guess you are, you're cooking gonna... a lot on, at home on your own and, and you know cooking yourself yes. for yourself. Yes. So you are constantly exactly trialing all this stuff, you know. Exactly. By default, really, there's right? basically there's like there's a ground of being. So there's like all this experience, all this know-how that I have from from cooking for years and years, and then it just comes together. There's a point where it's kind of almost inspiration strikes, and I'm just like, okay, here we go. And I'm using all this background. It doesn't come from nowhere. You know, it's coming from a, a place of, you know, experience. Um, yeah. But it yeah. just translates into, yeah, this, this works. But well, I was going to, can yeah. we come back to the, yeah, can we come back to the cakes? Because I just wanted to mention something we do. Um, yes, absolutely. Which we try and reduce we try and reduce the sugar uh, levels in cakes um, because the, the trend in, in cake recipes has been to increase the levels of sugar. So if you, if you look at recipes for brownies now compared to 10 to 15 years ago, the amount of sugar that's in a brownie now, it's, it's practically just sugar. And, you know, that's yeah. a fact. And, yeah, there's and a rumor, there's a rumor going around that, yeah, there's a rumor going around that sugar's not very good for you. I don't know if you've heard that it's, one as well. <laughs> it's, yeah, <laughs> it's a highly, highly addictive substance. Um, and it's, I think, almost as addictive as a cocaine um and it basically goes straight because it's it's just concentrated energy and refined sugar it goes straight to your brain and goes straight to your all your neurons and they just go yay let's have a party and yeah, as soon as right. that's come down you know just like a, a drugs come down they want more and so it's it's very very addictive and mm -hmm. so people say you know they have sugar cravings they um they want sugar they want their they want cake and for me i think um, in, t in terms of applying, you know, semi-yogi principles or holistic principles to my cooking is basically trying to break habits, trying to say, okay, well, you want something sweet, but you don't need to have something addictive. You can have something that's naturally sweetened, that contains fibers, which are very important to balance out the sugar rush. And if you have this balance of, you know, the sugar and the fiber, your brain is much less likely to well, it actually doesn't respond in the same way as if you just feed it pure, yeah. pure sugar. So that's yeah. why we use, we, we produce a lot of cakes which are naturally sweetened. And um, people don't quite understand that yet. They, they're not, you know, there's a few people who are tuned into that, but most people don't understand it. But even as they taste the cakes, 
they feel differently and they, they eat the cakes and they go, oh, this, this feels good. You know, it doesn't just taste good. It feels good. Yeah, because there's that because classic thing after normally when you eat, you feel like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you feel you feel like you've got this high, but you also feel a little bit unwell. Like you know, yeah. your body's like, oh, what have you done? I'm guilty and, as well. And, you know, a lot of people have, re <laughs> yeah, a, a lot of people have reactions to sugar. I mean, it's not just tooth decay or you know things mm -hmm. like that or, or diabetes, but there are there's a lot of um, bodily reactions. So all the bacteria in your guts um, yep. thrive on sugar, and that's the bad ones, you know, especially. If you give them a lot of sugar, you, you can get digestive issues. Um, and you can, these bacteria also seep into your bloodstream. They can cause inflammation in your joints. And then you get chronic pain and you don't know why, but you, you, you do know why. <laughs> because if you switch yeah. from this refined sugar to natural sugars, you don't, that doesn't happen anymore. So you feel instantly the difference. And, and that's what we try and do with the, with the food. So yeah, I think that's, for me, it's a big inspiration is trying to make people feel better through the food and, and removing things that are harmful for us. So first question then is, what do, you, what do you use to sweeten the cakes? Because I'm going to take note now, because next time I do some baking, I'm going to uh, take some yeah. more <laughs> <laughs> So it's, it's not as easy as replacing, you know, removing all the sugar and replacing with something else. There are different recipes and, you know, you've got to be prepared to kind of change your approach to cake. Right. but the naturally sweetened cakes are sweetened with dates um, and we oh, use medjool like dates which are very very yeah, yeah very juicy dates um, which, can, which are very high in fiber so that yeah. balances out with the sweet effects but and um, we also use agave syrup and you've got to make sure it's real 100% agave because there's a lot of fake stuff out there because it's, it's now become trend so people are yeah. banking on that and, and cutting the agave and okay. we use maple syrup as well which is you know just just syrup from a tree sap from a tree yeah um and and that's basically it i mean other things you can use are bananas you know if you're making banana bread for example i have yeah i have um, done banana bread um, before, <laughs> with, um, with, with just like in yeah. my kitchen, with very ripe bananas so they're very very sweet but yes exactly yeah. yeah and you know you you don't have to remove all the sugar you can just cut down um, but you can also use coconut sugar for some recipes. Uh -huh. um, and yeah, that's probably about it. But trying to just really avoid using white, highly processed, refined sugar. That's yeah, because I mean, that's the one where they've literally removed every trace of fiber. Yeah. I mean, one of the, I mean, one of the sort of, I guess, lenses that I've had to look at, because I mean, I've had, I've had my own sort of struggles with, with gut issues and stuff like that. We, that's a whole nother podcast mm. for a whole nother time. But yeah. Um, <laughs> You know, I've come to the realization that you know we do crave sugar, but when we crave something yeah. like the sugar, like it's like what you touched on a minute ago, you need to think about what is it in nature that your actual body's actually craving, and give it that. Because if you give it, if you give it the taste of sugar, that that's that's great. You get you one tick in the box for right. You got the flat. Your body got the flavor it wanted. But there's a whole other bit of that, which is things like nutrients, fiber. Mm. You know, all of these other chemicals that maybe we don't even know what they are yet you know maybe we only know a little bit yeah but all of these other things yeah. those boxes need to be ticked in your body as well and if you eat just a, a real sugar bomb <laughs> like a chocolate bar mm -mm -mm. like that when you're craving sugar yeah. 10 minutes later half an hour later your body's going to say well thanks for that but i'm still not full i need something else because you haven't given yeah. it you know and that's that's i think where the overeating thing comes yeah. in and then you get, you know, people then, oh, okay, I'll have another chocolate bar and another one and another one. And then next thing yeah. you make like, yeah. because your body's not actually getting what it actually wants, you know, and you're only focused on the taste. Exactly. Right? So I think it's a really important thing. And that when I had that exactly. realization, when I was getting these, you know, if I was craving something that, you know, perhaps was fatty or sweet, I'd try and look into nature and say, well, what are those things that I'm actually, wanting? you know, maybe it's an avocado. Yeah. <laughs> maybe it's yeah. A, a, yeah, a, yeah, yeah, yeah. Something, you know, I think that's a really important point, and I think it's great to see, you know, um, businesses, uh, food businesses like yourself, actually, you know, making sure that, that that you know is really in your, I guess, soul, making sure that you're not, you are, you are actually looking at it from a nutrient-based perspective. Although flavour is important as well, you have to, yeah, you have to, <clears throat> yeah. you know, making things taste amazing because that's the other point of food, obviously. But you know, the main reason yeah. is to fuel our body. So you know, you've got to fuel it with the right thing. Yeah, um, exactly. So you, I mean, exactly. came onto yeah. our, our radar um, because of the, your great online reputation. That's how we found you online. 
Um, so I just want to learn a little bit more about that. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it's so important now to have a, a great online reputation. You know, the, the importance mm. of having a good reputation is as important as how good, you know, your cafe or your restaurant looks when someone walks past it. It's really got to that point now, maybe even more important in, in some ways. So tell us a little bit more about that and how you kind of build your reputation, how you've maintained it as well. And, you know, perhaps there's any, if you've got any mm -hmm. tips or experiences that you've got personally in that. Okay. Um, so first of all, I'm going to tamper that down by saying we're, we're just a new business. So <laughs> we're still growing and I'm still learning every single day about what it is that I need to do. So I am by no means an expert, but um, basically I think the most important thing about any presence, whether online or, you know, in real life is that you have got to give people what they want. And although obviously I have my own agenda, we've discussed, you know, already that, that, that I have very strong beliefs about the food that I put out there. So I've got a very good vision. Um, but actually having a strong vision is, is a start. And then really fitting that in with what people want. What do they want? What do they want to see? What are they interested in? And, and so that's kind of the basics of marketing really is, is knowing who the people are you're talking to and, and what they want. That can be very tricky at the start of your business because you don't know yet. Um, but as you see, you know, the people walking in through your door or if you're just online based or maybe you have a street food catering, you can, you can gauge that and you can respond to that and adapt to that. And so being flexible is really important, um, but also tapping into what people's needs are. What do they want to know? Um, so understanding about trends is important um looking at what other people are doing but not necessarily to copy them but to inspire yourself and 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 see oh this is something that people love um, um and then just really building your online presence i think for me it's really important that it's an organic process so going through <laughs> when you start your business you get spammed by these people who are trying to to sell you followers yeah, and I've, just I've stay away from that well, yeah. there's yeah. There's no need I, I, because I these people are not two, real. Two offers, yeah, I get two offers a week, roughly. You want <laughs> right. to build me a website or get me loads of uh, loads of robot uh -huh. followers on Instagram or something? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, well, why? You know, it's like, are you yeah. trying to build build a real business or are you trying to build a robot business? Because <laughs> you know, you have to. Yeah, you have to be discerning and just just um, trust that the followers will come once you put out what people need. They will, they will want that and they will want to share it. And I mean, I have done um, a few courses online with, you know, um, social, various social media or marketing people. I'm in various business groups where you share tips, um, you know, and, and you can, you know, people have, you know, these like five day, you know, become more uh, present online. You know, okay, kind of, yeah. Um, like a workshops or masterclasses. Yeah. These are, these are always useful. I would just highly recommend if you enjoy learning, you know, which I do, um, go on these courses because even if some of them might not be applicable to you or some of it doesn't fit in with your vision, it's, it's, it, you, there's always a take home message and you can always apply that and try it and always be ready to try something new with, um, with social media and do, to, you know, you have to be consistent as well. So that's kind of a mixed message, but yeah. just really trying to, to push your limits and and find out what else what what's next what can you do what what can you learn about it and how to to grow um, your reputation and spread the word about what you're doing um, I think what's really important as well with with online is to realize that i mean i before I run the the cafe in its present state, I run a little kiosk um, on a on the, in a park in Edinburgh and so it's just literally a little booth and it's just me inside all day. Uh, no toilet and yeah <laughs> developed a very strong bladder and uh, so I had people popping by and you know I would put out content on social media and I would have say like hundreds of likes but I would literally have maybe five customers all day yeah I mean again, <laughs> and it's, that's, it's really that's interesting such a, such a good point such a good point because people yeah. often they focus so much on like how many <laughs> likes and it, it's great you know you could you could have a you could create an account for your restaurant putting out loads of really funny memes and, and stupid stuff and get loads of likes but if none of those people are actually coming into your business and giving you money what's the yeah. point <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly um, saying that i mean it does it doesn't mean it's not important but what's really important is to have a physical presence so have yeah. uh, build a community of people who actually come in and you know they're like your friends they basically walk in and it's like having people walk into your house to 
and you have to feed them and 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 keep yeah. them happy so running events is really is really cool thing to do for that um you know um film events markets um music events we have a beautiful big space so so blessed to be able to do these things um but also with the, the well-being space above obviously i have a great opportunity to create that every single day with the classes that we run and the workshops mm. and people you know these are life-changing kind of um events because people come and Maybe they're depressed, maybe they're dealing with a lot of stuff in their life and they do a yoga masterclass or come to a mantra singing workshop and they come down feeling, you know, so much better already. And then they get into the cafe and they get some food and it's just kind of an added, you know, cherry. Well, it's the whole experience. Kind of thing yeah, where, that it really is the whole yeah. experience. Um, and, you know, I'd, I'd agree exactly. with you. Certainly in terms of things like yoga, I started doing yoga about a year and a half ago. Um, oh, and wow. if you spoke to me about two years ago, I'd have said yoga, but I'll go to the gym and lift some weights, thanks. Like that's not for me, kind of thing. Uh -huh. um, and I was having, I was having a, I was ha not bad, but I, you know, I, I sit down a lot when I'm working because I'm at a computer most of the time. Um, and I was having some back mm. issues and stuff. And I was going to the gym a lot, keeping myself healthy or what I thought was healthy. Um, you know, trying to eat a mm. really healthy diet most of the time. And, and I, I entered someone and said, why don't you just try yoga? And there was one of my friends is actually mm. a yoga teacher. So I thought it was a prime opportunity for me to, mm -hmm. to go. Within a few weeks, I like mm -hmm. got rid of a lot of the pain that I was feeling in my back and stuff like that. Um, and it is just, I think it is, it is a life changing experience because now I, do, I, I couldn't actually, you know, oh, my, my yoga teacher actually, um, she, um, she has been pregnant for the last well, eight months. She's just about to give birth, actually, um, very soon. Um, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. uh, when she stopped doing yoga because she was pregnant, I was like, oh, no. I felt really bad. And I was like, I, I didn't realise how much I missed it. And it's like, it is. It's such, a, it's such an amazing yeah. thing. But I think the way that you've combined that with, you know, the, mm. the other part of it, which is the, the eating and the, the, the sort of the nourishment side, I think it's just such an amazing mm kind of combination I, I, I haven't really seen is there are there many places around the UK that kind of do that or got this kind of concept because it, it seems like an um, obvious one to me but it's I haven't seen it before. yeah right <laughs> <laughs> I know there are a few <laughs> there are a few um they're not they're not that many um the ones that are doing it are doing it with reasonable success it's it's about it's about being multidisciplinary, but truly. So I run both businesses and it's a lot, you know, you, it's just, mm -hmm. it's two different businesses really, but all that's under one roof. Yeah, um, right. that's the challenge, yeah. And there's actually a lot, but, but because there's quite a lot of cross pollination, it's, you know, it's easy enough to run it as one business It's completely complementary. And the people that's who cool. do the yoga, love the food, you know, that's, that's my, my, my easy, my low hanging fruit, as they like to call them. Well, the, first, the first thing I want to do is business do terms. Like, yoga session is go and eat. <laughs> so. Yeah, exactly. And have like, yeah. have something really healthy and nourishing. Absolutely. You know, it's like, that's what you feel like because you've, you've tuned into yourself and yourself, you, your own body, your own body knows what it needs. So mm. when you come down to the cafe, you're like, oh yeah, I just, I know what I want. Um, but also like, yeah, there are a few, I mean, it, it can be tricky to have both sides of the business just right. And I think for me, you know, I'm constantly working on both at the same time and making sure yeah. to improve the offerings, to make sure that everything is, is level and I don't let one down and, and up okay. the other. So just yeah. kind of working on both together to grow them together. I, I, there's another business in Edinburgh who has a cafe and a wellbeing center. The cafe is not that great. So it's, so it's, kind it's of like run by external people. A, a built in kind of thing yeah. yeah 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 but right. so you know you have to you have to get it right basically but but there are a few places yeah there's not that many but yeah it, it's it's no. not to take on probably that's why it's i guess maybe maybe that's it yeah because <laughs> to me in terms of the concept it just seems like something that you know it's just so obvious you know i mean not not to discredit the idea but it's just like why would people not want that yeah, it's, so it's, it's really exactly really cool. um but so yeah. I want to I want to steer back towards the food, um, which is the main reason, mm -hmm. yeah, my my favourite part of the yep. uh, discussion. So, what is your favourite yep. menu item, and and why is one of my favourite questions that we ask. Them yeah, so, so far away. Yeah, so I think there's two, but I'm gonna pick one. <laughs> so I think at the moment our pop, most popular menu item is our cooked breakfast, and obviously I mean the, the reasons why I think you know 
habits um you know all habits die hard and <laughs> people love brunching they love going out the weekends um and a cook breakfast is just an opportunity for so many different you know a variety of things on one plate just coming together on one plate it's indulgent but um we have a healthy reworking of it which makes it quite unique um and yeah it's a british favorite isn't it so um on on we our five, breakfast, breakfast we have <laughs> We all love our breakfast. Uh, on our on our uh, cooked breakfast, we have a, a vegan haggis. We have our wow. own scrambled tofu, which you know has been sampled by many non-vegans and deemed as you know better than scrambled egg. Um, we have sautéed kale, which you know kale is like a powerhouse of beautiful uh -huh. nutrients. Uh, plus, you get all this fiber, which is great. Um, and we have portobello mushroom, and we also have our homemade baked beans. So. Just having these things and, and tomatoes and other bits, but just having these things just combined on the plate, I think it's it's just great. Um, avocado as well, because you know avocado. Who doesn't love avocado? Oh yeah, av avocado. Um, but, you know, source of good fats. <laughs> it does. So I mean, just having a balance. It, it's a balanced meal actually, with fiber, good fats, um, texture, flavors. Um, you know, all these things that you need to feel great, and it, it really is. I think I think that's that's why it's our most popular food item um, because it just works. It's indulgent but super super healthy, so you leave feeling yeah. good. You know, that's you just a rare don't, combination. You know, normally after a grease that's uh, healthy, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. So you don't need to feel bad. You you still had your little bit of naughtiness, but actually it's uh, really good for you in the end. So yeah. I, I didn't have much of a <laughs> breakfast this morning, so I'm really hungry now. <laughs> oh no, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll definitely be having something else. <laughs> um, so you said there was another one? Did you say there was two? There's a cooked breakfast? Well, I would say, yeah. So we have something quite unique that we make at the cafe, which is our own vegan cheeses. So we make them very small batches and we make uh, about 10 different varieties of cheese that are all very different in, again, flavors, textures and ingredients. Yeah. And so we serve it as a, as a, as a, sharing platter uh for two so like a, a cheese board basically oh, wow. um and also as for one for people who just want it for them um and it's it is a popular item it's something that definitely people come to us specifically um to to sample it um and it's it's a really interesting thing because you know obviously i've developed the cheeses over the years and it's just seeing the responses that we get from it is is just fantastic I mean, as people come we have a blue cheese that we make with cashews and um, people come and they say oh I, I don't really like blue cheese anyway you know people who still yeah. eat dairy and we're like well so just give it a try and they yourself. try and like you make them all yes yourself. yes oh, wow. we, we make them all yeah. ourselves yeah in the cafe and and they try the blue cheese and they say oh i don't like blue cheese but i love this <laughs> it's amazing <laughs> and yeah. our blue cheese actually contains uh, spirulina which is uh, a seaweed which is you know known to have a lot of um, antioxidants and some beautiful effects for your health so um you know the, the cheeses themselves although you wouldn't want to eat that every day because you know they can and do they do they sort of fat. taste like cheese or are they kind of they do they yeah taste yeah <laughs> they do. i'm just wondering because I, I mean i'm really interested in this stuff because i like i said I, you know i do a lot of sort of cooking and stuff myself food's an absolute passion of mine but i'm just i'd love to sort of if it's have you got any sort of like quick tips if someone wanted to make try making a vegan cheese at home an easy way to do that or is it quite complicated? Oh. Um, just, I mean, a quick way. No, I think you need, no, to, you need to learn <laughs> how to make it properly. There's, okay, okay. there's no, I mean, there's a lot of recipes online that are just rubbish. So, and even, right, even okay. in magazines and cookbooks, yeah. there's, there's a lot of crap out there. Um, right. so, and, and also there's so many different ones. It depends what you want, but you know, um, it's possible. I run, um, cheese making workshops. Um, oh, I go, just okay. run one last week and I'm doing them every month. Yeah. So, you know, just, just learning how to do it properly, getting a proper book, um, to do it is, is easy enough, but you, yeah, you just gotta, you just gotta get it right. Don't do anything that, you know, that is online because some of the stuff is, is rubbish. Is it, <laughs> so, yeah. is it a long, is it a long process? Um, is, it, is it, so it's, does it take a long time? To no, some of them. So some of the cheeses we make are practically instant, where you need to leave them overnight in the fridge to, to cool down, but they're cooked. Others take a whole week to make. So it's, oh, it's wow. you know, it's as easy or as hard as you want to make it, depending on what you're making. The ones that tend to be 
uh, the most liked by our customers are the ones that take a bit longer to make. So I would say you do need to put the effort in. And actually dairy cheese takes a long time to make. And people don't realize that, you know, no, that's what I was wondering. cheese is just between, a commodity. Yeah, the difference between the two, whether mm. there are similar kind of similar approaches to the methods, as that there are potentially as well. So no, anyone yeah, who wants to learn yeah. to make cheese properly needs to get down to one of your workshops, basically. <laughs> Yes, absolutely. Well, they're all sold out. They sell out very quickly. But, oh, wow. Yeah, it's definitely, definitely worth doing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so there's um, a need for it. You know, people need to want to learn. <laughs> I think it's great. Yeah. And again, you know, it's another way to, to make use of the amazing space that you've got, you know, offering things like not just yoga mm -hmm. workshops, but cookery workshops as well. I mean, what another great thing to add, because I think a lot of restaurants, um, probably more people with more sort of like traditionalist approaches um, to their restaurants, a lot of restaurant owners, they they will often shy away from, you know, helping people learn to cook at home or showing people recipes because they think that actually it's going to make people go and cook more at home and not come to their restaurant. But I think that's a very short-sighted view, actually. And I think if you can actually get into the heads yeah. of people at home, so if you if you do a course on cookery yeah. and people go home and they're creating the beetroot savage recipes, well, what are they thinking about when they're eating mm. their dinner at home? They're thinking about you and your restaurant and the amazing stuff yeah. that you're doing. Yeah. And next time they do want to reach yeah. out, there's much higher chance they're going to come and see you because you've, they, you've been in their head more. And they, of you know, course. That's like my obvious marketing, yeah. I think. But a lot, of, yeah. a lot of people do shy away from that. They shy away from giving away recipes. They shy away from showing people inside yeah. their kitchen and what goes on and people, all this secretive stuff. And I think that's kind of the opposite of what's, what the reason people like social media, for example, because it opens yeah. up all that stuff. You can share all this stuff exactly. all the time. There's so many people. And exactly. I think... You know, what I see in the marketplace is, is a lot of the restaurant owners or brands with, with that, the kind of closed door approach that don't want to share a lot of this stuff. They we actually will lose out eventually, I think. I think it's yeah. a dangerous game. Well, take. they're not of this, they're not of this time. I mean, the, this, this time is a time of sharing and connection. And, um, you know, social media facilitates that. But um, on a physical level, we need to do that as well, even more, in fact, because... And it's, yeah. it, it, becomes, it becomes a special space. You know, the, the people that come to workshops, they come back and they become family and they tell all their friends. And if they make one of my recipes for their friends or for their family, they will tell them, this is, I've learned this from this. And if you think about your own relationship with any teacher you've had that, who you've, you've learned something really worthwhile from, yeah. I mean, you don't you don't see them as someone you've stolen something from. You you see them yeah. as someone who's added something to your life. So yeah. there's a there's a respect and a trust and something that is, you know, it's it's organically created. Like I don't engineer that. It's not it's not I don't do it because I want to be their teacher. I just I just do it because we we then have a relationship. And this is it, this time it's all about relationships, <clears throat> and we need to nurture that in every every business really, not just restaurants or holistic businesses but every no, type of business should nurture relationships i think podcasts are a great example of nurturing relationships because you're talking to one yeah. person and that's getting shared out to lots of other people so there you yeah, are I mean, yeah <laughs> no, i absolutely agree i think that is and it's just providing value to people over trying to yeah. take their money basically um, yeah you know, yeah trying to actually provide if you provide value to people and you, you help them and you do good stuff and you build a relationship with people you know they're naturally going to want to spend more time with you, they're naturally going to yeah. they're actually going to learn to trust you because they understand the person behind all that thing. Yeah. I think it's a really important thing that any business. Um, yeah. can but I think th that community side of things seems like a really um, important part of or important part of the recipe for your success. Yeah. I mean, what what do you think that's? I mean, that's one of the questions that I wanted to get into is sort of like what sort of factor or decision you think has contributed to your success thus far do you think it's that or is there other things that you feel have contributed to that um at this point no i think definitely i mean for me when you come to the cafe you're definitely invited to eat at my house um so you know wow. whether i know you or not you know it's it's basically you're my guests and you're eating the food that i love to share with you yeah yeah, I mean, I think I think that's what it should be about. <laughs> I don't really understand how it could be any other way. So my staff, you know, they, they all embrace that idea. They, you know, new staff, I have to kind of repeat that because they might come from a, a different background of hospitality where yeah. things are like, well, this is the food you serve it. You know, you, you ask politely if everything's okay, but it's not like 
but that's kind of fake. It's like, well, mm. if you were at home, how would you behave? You wouldn't just go, is your food okay? You would, you would make sure that the people are feeling great, you know, because they're mm. at your house and they're your friends. So you treat people like they're your friends until proven otherwise, basically. <laughs> um, and that's, you know, that's, that's what the community is. It's just seeing everyone else as another use. So, um, yeah, just do unto us, others as you would do unto yourself. So basically, I mean, it's not a religious yeah. thing, obviously. It's just a, a no, human, no. human behavior thing. Hey, hey in that respect um, to the community of people that are, kind of, you know, yeah. if someone's, someone's going to give you their money, then you better make sure that you do everything yeah. you can to make it worth, worth it for them, you know? And I mean, I mean, before they give you their money, you know, I mean, they give you their money at the end, you know, after yeah, the Yeah, that's meeting. true, especially with food. That's a particularly dangerous one, isn't it? Yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> but so what do they give you first when they come and order, when they come in, just even walking in, what do they give you first is their trust, you know, before they've ordered. And yeah. so you've got to repay that trust, you know, with, with respect and with um, consideration that it deserves. And, and that's... Mm for me it's a trust relationship I, I remember when i first opened the kiosk uh, on the meadows the tiny little booth that I was running the, the place from for six months i just i was always amazed it's like why why are people coming here how do they know that i i'm gonna give them good food like it, it's just trust it's just a, yeah. a sort of sudden decision you know and then i realized that's what i do too i go to a restaurant i go to a cafe and i just put my trust that these people are going to feed me what i need to be fed you know and we don't always realize that that's something that we don't think about, you know, when we walk into yeah. a place, but we actually instinctively trust that these people are going to give us what we want. And mm. so you've got to honor that you, as a restaurateur, you've got to honor that trust basically. Um, and it's yeah, quite and an important I, concept. I guess, yeah. Your whole, whole reputation hangs on that trust as well, really. Yeah. If it's not yeah. a bad experience, you know, conversely, um, yeah. you know, that's, that's not going to travel well. <laughs> no, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, so what have been some of the challenges? So one of the things I want to um, like dig into when I, when I talk to people on, on this podcast is I want to understand, you know, all the, all the great, amazing things they've done. But what are, what are some of the um, challenges that, that you've had and some of the habits that have perhaps contributed to you getting past those challenges? So I want to try and understand, I guess, sort of where perhaps you've had um, some problems with, your business or maybe there's some challenges that you've had to get over that have just seemed really hard and if you've got any habits or things that you what you've done to actually get over those um so we can try and learn i guess from from some of the experiences that you've had um you know especially being such a new business so i'm guessing mm -hmm. you've got a few things to to pull from is there anything that comes to mind when i, when I yeah i mean for me it's been a very steep learning curve because i i literally had near to no experience in the in the hospitality trade when I started my business um so you know and and just running the the business side of things I, I had done courses but things like finances like managing the cash flow is right. it's just extraordinarily difficult um human resources like recruiting staff I'm quite a trusting person so you know that for me it's been learning to kind of step back a little bit and and stop you know, naively believing that everyone has got something to offer because actually some people don't. <laughs> so it's maybe a bit more of a cynic. <laughs> um, you know, marketing, I was mentioning earlier, just, just learning how to do that, learning, understanding the basics of it. Um, just, you know, challenges um, at home with balancing the family life with the work life. Mm. I think that's, for me, that's been the hardest thing. Um, and yeah that's that's something i'm still working on <laughs> and yeah, yeah the, the, the sheer hardship of it just how many hours you have to spend there at the beginning and uh, i mean I, i'd worked i'd worked um night shifts uh, emergency services as a vet before i did that for five and a half years so i thought well i'm ready and i can i can work for like 48 hours straight you know that's yeah. i'm used to it i did that for yeah. five years but actually this is different because this is literally constantly in your head as your own business is everything yeah. is it's you um uh -huh. so for me learning to kind of step back from the business has been like that's that's my main thing that i would maybe advise people who are starting out to kind of learn as quickly as they can to kind of learn to delegate learn to be discerning and who you delegate to 
learn to write down your processes, uh, which I'm still working on, by the way, I'm not, I haven't <laughs> got there yet, no, but no. I know that I, I'm working on that. Um, working down your, pro writing down your processes, basically treating your business as if, well, I, I read a few books about this, I'm still not there, but treating your business as if it was a franchise so that you can almost, you know, walk away from it and everyone yeah. knows what they're supposed to be Based doing. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I'm, I'm not there, but I'm just, no. I have the awareness of it and I'm working yeah. on that um, yeah. so that, you know, you can step back because even if you're a complete workhorse, and I certainly am one, um, then there's a point where, you know, it's it's so overwhelming, it, it just takes over your life and and it can lead to, you know, breakdowns or, you know, and I've seen a few people around me that that's happened too. So just looking mm -hmm. after yourself um, gaining support from the community, I mean, that, that's, that's kind of obvious, but knowing that you're not alone and there's other people there that can help you when you're feeling, you know, that everything is a bit too much. And, um, yeah, asking your friends and your family, <laughs> that's really important as well when you're struggling financially or struggling with just simple, you know, HR issues or things like that. You know, that, that there are people out there that just want to help. Um, so just yeah. knowing that, um, yeah, that it's not easy to remember that. Yeah. Yeah, um, and I think, so I think yeah. just real, like, realizing, I guess, that everyone, everyone that has grown a business has suffered the same stresses in a lot of yeah. cases that, that you know we all go through. Uh, yeah. And starting it, and it's uh, it's completely normal. But one of the yeah. important points you made there, this is something that comes up in pretty much every, not just restaurant owner, business owner that, that I talk mm. to, is about delegation of tasks mm. and how yeah. important that is, and you know. Um, learning you know when when something is your own when you've created your own business you know in, in your case you've created this amazing you know wellness cafe and center it can be it, it can be so hard to give those reins over to people and, yeah. and trust them enough to be able to to take take your vision forward without yeah. without your you know without having to micromanage them you know and i think that's a, yeah. something that most business owners struggle with and i think that's possibly one of the biggest factors that stop businesses from growing past a certain glass ceiling because yeah. the owner will not give away control of certain yeah. areas and learning to trust other people and also trust that you know maybe it's not just your ideas that are amazing other people yeah. have great ideas as well and yeah. letting them letting them kind of giving them that control yeah. and ownership to take that stuff forward yeah. not only uh, creates an inclusive you know element to the team but also yeah. give you that all important time back to actually work on the mm. strategy, the higher level stuff that is really going to take your business from sort of like down here to, you know, to yeah. up here. And I think that's such an important point and a, a point that, as I say, yeah. it gets made all the time, but it also gets ignored a lot as well, I think, by a lot of people. Um, a lot mm -hmm. of people aren't prepared to do that. I think for me as well, I've, yeah, I've had this, um, this thing where I did delegate um, part of the business and, but I didn't delegate to the right person and I didn't delegate in the yeah. right way. And so that went horribly wrong and I had to take back the reins and right. waste a lot of energy and money and, you know, resources in delegating wrongly. So I think it's good to say delegate, delegate, but you have to do it in the right way. And, and mm. what the right way is, isn't the same for everyone. So, um, you know, it, it, it depends on the person you've chosen. You, you have to make sure yeah. I mean, you, sometimes you don't know as well. Like, you know, they start working for you and then you realize, oh my God, they're actually putting spanners in the works rather than making this work better. Um, yeah. But you, you can't tell until they're on the job. I mean, maybe you can. I, don't, I haven't worked the out the magic. Just, I think it's just the joys of managing people, really. But yeah. um, I think, I think again, it goes back to what you said earlier, even with, when you were talking about your menus. You've got to try this stuff. And if it doesn't work, fine. You pull it back and you try okay. a different approach. Different but, way. Know, yeah, exactly. It's, 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 the worst thing you can do is is to hear a story like that that you just told where perhaps something didn't work out and go and be too scared to try something and say oh well it didn't work yeah. once so I'm not going to do it anymore and I think I think that can be can be crippling. Um, yeah. Just I like the other thing I like to get into is you know, mentioned briefly in in the last question is like habits. Where in particular, mm -hmm. I like daily habits and and things that things that you do almost on a daily basis or at least weekly basis that work towards success. You know, I, I find that. I am definitely uh, a very habit-based person. My personality definitely um, needs habit to be able to get stuff done. But also, habits can be <laughs> quite destructive at the same time. So, is there any like 
daily weekly habits that you incorporate um, into your life that you feel have, have really helped you you know take on some of these challenges yeah I think uh, for me it, it comes down to looking after myself so self-care is like a bit bandied around as a kind of generalized thing but I think um, I know that if I skip meditation for a few days I just don't feel very good and all the thoughts are just too much in my head so just just trying to do various forms of meditation it doesn't need to be actually the thing is people think meditation you have to sit and do nothing it's like that that's yeah, um, one part, <laughs> that's one part of it yeah that that is one thing but also just sometimes it's just um just doing some breathing exercise it could be in the car or it could be just um well, when you're doing something else you're actually giving time for yourself giving time to observe your thoughts and mm. your feelings and that's something i do on a daily basis sometimes i sit you know sometimes i just do it as i'm going about my day yeah. um but that, that for me is really important i mean yoga as well because you know I'm, I'm i might look young but i'm quite old so i'm just kind of needing to get my body to move the energy to move around my body if i don't do that i'm i feel stagnant i feel everything's too much like my shoulders just hike up you know and i've got yeah. the weight of the world on my shoulders and just kind of <laughs> <laughs> um a kind of um other thing i do it's not weekly but kind of monthly is is uh, speak to my business mentor and okay. finding a good business mentor is really important someone who's on the same wavelength that challenges you like yeah. you know picks on things that you're not doing quite right and and yeah, for me it's important yeah hold your camera and i've always had great teachers like ever since you know i was a child i've had people that i look up to and trust and i just um i know they help me grow so i for me it's really important to have a business mentor um i'm very independent and you know i have my own things but i do think that needs to be balanced out by someone who's just kind of going right okay what else can you do you know there's like yeah, yeah, other yeah. things yeah. there um, so yeah. I think that's a really healthy, healthy habit to have as well as a, as a business mentor. It, it might not be someone professional, it might be someone, you know, like a friend who you can talk things through with, or yeah. it could be business partners if you have them, uh -huh. um, you know, but, but someone who's just holding you accountable and constantly challenging yeah. you and not letting you sit in your pile of to do's and, you know, um, yeah, that, that to yeah. do <laughs> can bury you sometimes. Yeah. I mean, uh, I think we all, yeah. I think that's, <laughs> A great bit of advice getting a business mentor or some kind of someone it, mm. just, just the accountability element is probably one of the most important parts of that relationship you know having someone that you know perhaps is where you want to get to is, is great mm. because it means that they can give you you know solid advice on, on how to get you know reach your goals but just to have someone that's going to hold you accountable each week like, oh did yeah. you do that did you do that thing you was going to do last week oh you yeah. didn't why not and knowing that you're going to look stupid if you don't <laughs> get yeah. done, i think it's a really you know really really important important thing yeah. um, and, and again you know back to the meditation side of things again that that's something that i've sort of ex been experimenting with um quite a bit in the last couple of years and again you know a few years ago if you just sort of said to me i'll try meditation i'd have been like eh, don't think so mm. a bit like a bit like the yoga thing not really for me mm. um but it's it's a game changer <laughs> it really is we, mm. when i, I don't yeah. do it every day i wish i could mm. i don't even do it necessarily every week but i do it when i feel like i need to just kind of switch off and i think mm -hmm. the most important thing is actually just having some time away from this this thing mm. uh, because, yeah because i naturally just sit there looking at my phone when i'm not when i'm not when i'm in a space where i should actually be sitting there maybe thinking or thinking about my life i just naturally pick my phone up i do it all the time i pick my phone up mm. and look, look at some kind of screen and possibly for me one of the biggest benefits of meditation is just like putting that rubbish like the phone screen the, the social media the, all the things that are distracting you to one side and just closing your eyes like if, if you don't do anything else just do try that for five minutes yeah. and i think you know that don't worry about trying to think of one thing or all these things people say just yeah. just shut everything off and just sit there in silence yeah. because not many people i don't think many people do that <laughs> mm -hmm. like, Traditionally, yeah. you know, if you went out to the shops to meet your friends or you was meeting someone at the cinema and they were 10 minutes late, you know, you just stood there and you just thought about your life for 10 minutes. You know, and mm. I think a lot of those moments that we used to have where we just sat there in silence are gone now because you just, mm -mm. The first thing you do is you pick up your phone and you start looking at Instagram or whatever, yeah. emails or, and yeah. I think we've taken away that, that, that silence from our lives. And I think, I think yeah. meditation is a great, great way to get that back. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be all spiritual and, hippie and all yeah. that stuff it's actually yeah. just 
some silence in your life. Just giving yourself back some silence. Mm -hmm. Even if you want to spend that five minutes thinking yeah. about your to-do list, whatever it is, just just give it to yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Huge, huge yeah. thing that not enough people are doing, but it's picking mm -hmm. up a lot of um, attention in this day. Mm -hmm. I think partly because of that, because some people are just now we don't have boredom anymore do we, we just look at a screen every time yeah. we, we think we have nothing to do we stare at that screen and yeah. most, i'm certainly very guilty of that and i'm trying to be more conscious of it but it's it's just such an important thing i think meditation is a great way to, to kind of reverse yes. some of that damage that we're, we're doing um, yeah 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 so anyone uh, we're kind of coming towards the end of the interview now but um it's been amazing amazing um talk and it's been really insightful to, to get into some of the um you know movement based stuff we often don't get into obviously for obvious reasons with, with restaurants um mm -hmm. but I mean, if you could give a piece of advice to anyone that's considering starting a restaurant anyone that's considering perhaps entering into the food business pr putting their passion into into a business you know you've given us some amazing advice in this interview i wonder if there's any specific advice that you would give to anyone and, and please don't say don't do it <laughs> no i would say the opposite just keep trying focus on the positives everyone has um ups and downs when they start a business there's no one that you know truthfully can say yeah i went to food business it was all great no way like everyone has yeah. super high super lows but like serious super lows like extreme self-doubt is part of the journey so you just gotta you just gotta delve into it and accept that and just accept that some days it's gonna be super shit and super scary <laughs> and other days it's gonna be amazing and just try and focus on the positives because actually if you look at your life it's it's always like that like you have like times when it's everything's okay. great and times when everything's shit and you just got to get over the, the shit bits and accept them and focus on the positives and just, just do that. Um, and maybe write down a list of the amazing stuff that is happening, you know, as you're creating your business and keep that list um, just maybe, you know, in front of you, like on the wall, paste it on your fridge or something. So you can keep looking at it when you're feeling that everything's going to fall apart and just keep trying to try and keep, keep asking for support. Um, if you are slightly spiritually minded then ask for help or rely on your faith whatever it is you know you can yeah. ask the angel yeah, if you believe in them yeah. that sort of thing you know whatever it is just or you can ask friends you know it's like you know it's the same thing <laughs> but yeah. just um just keep the faith keep believing in yourself and just keep going and you know at the end of the day if it's not going to work it's not going to work and that's going to be pretty obvious at some point <laughs> yeah there's a few telltale I'm, signs uh, your business is failing yeah you your, starts with your bank account <laughs> yeah you know but even then you, you look at your bank account and well have you asked your family for money to help during that sort of short like short term you know cash flow problem because that's happened to me you know i've asked like everyone um yeah. to get me through and then you realize all oh, right if i just up the prices a little bit or do these different offerings do more of what people want instead of what i want to do you know you can always change your business that's the thing it's not yeah. a fixed thing so just so, making sure you learn from those experiences yeah that's exactly important. you are everyone everyone's going to get it wrong i mean, yeah. I mean everyone's going to get it wrong at some point and, and you know it's about your recovery from that right you, you exactly let that yeah. beat you then you won't have a successful business in three, totally four, five years you know totally um, yeah. and it is like ultimately also like because I think we live in this world where we're always thinking everything's got to grow. And it's like, yeah, that's true, but things grow at different rates. And mm -hmm. there's also now this thinking that actually not everything has to grow. Things grow to a certain extent and then in nature they die. You know, I mean, if you live in tropical jungle, everything looks like it's growing all the time. Like this, it's always green, like nothing's ever kind of dead. Like we have here, you know, in, in, in Europe, you know, mm -hmm. the trees die down in winter and yeah. there's no leaves and there's no sign of life. But then, um, you know, it, so, oops, hold on, sorry, my phone's running out of battery. That's right. Hello? Okay. Um, <laughs> but then it's, um, it's basically, so you can, you can have this growth mindset and go, it's going to grow, it's going to grow. Yeah, try and make it grow because that's healthy and you're going to be able to, you know, do more if you do that but also accept that if it's not growing at the rate that you want it to maybe you're just in a dying phase and like maybe it's gonna die and so just not being scared of these things they happen for a reason and you just gotta 
go with it yeah. and do your best like just do your best that's my one advice <laughs> yeah i think <laughs> that's, that's great advice right you know you, you you know the things that you should be doing and know things you shouldn't be doing when you're running a business you know yeah um, so you know try and do more of the stuff that you know you should be doing and then you yeah. know if, if you can sit back at the end of the day and say look well i, I really had a good crack at that i really it. tried yeah. you know and um, then yeah. you know what what have you got to be sad about really um no that's yeah, exactly. amazing um absolutely amazing advice mm. and thank you for you know your your honesty your openness it's been been really really insightful and i think a really mm-hmm. valuable podcast for, for our listeners um so finally we're at the end of our conversation now but what's have you got anything that's coming up what's next for beat roots of ours what have we got in the pipeline and anything we can perhaps look out for mm. anything we can if, if people want to come down is there any certain events that you point towards tell us yeah so well, there's quite a few things well one thing is i mentioned the cheese briefly earlier on i think um the next project for me and it probably will be a different business but is to to kind of launch that on a on a larger scale for retail so that's going to take a lot of effort oh, wow. so i'm going to wait till i'm okay. settled down with this one for us right. uh, but that's certainly something we've got forward and then um with the wellness center we're creating more experiences that combine the you know well-being practices with the food so you come and we we've already done one in september and it was really really successful so you come um you get a juice shot in the morning you do your yoga you come down have a lovely brunch um you know really wholesome food with a smoothie and then i run a cookery shop workshop and teach you how to make super good um little vegan snacks that are full of energy and fiber and, and taste like really good truffles <laughs> wow. and yeah so you leave you leave you have the morning of recharging yourself and uh, reboosting you know and just learning new stuff and skills that you can apply everyday life so that's kind of the sort of thing we're going to do a little bit more of in the coming months and hopefully years and that sort of thing wow. yeah really really exciting. <laughs> okay so um finally just um just wanted to know if people want to uh, check you guys out online see what you're doing i mean your sort your social media handles is that what's the instagram facebook so yeah so we um are on instagram uh, at beetroot sauvage all one word um and we're on facebook as well uh, look up for beetroot sauvage and our website is beetrootsauvage.co.uk um and yeah drop us an email or come in <laughs> when you're in edinburgh it's a wonderful place to visit if you're from london but uh even if you're from the whole world <laughs> it's wonderful awesome. no, it's amazing yeah. as i said as I said before you know it really really stood out to us as a, as a real amazing experience um you know coming into your cafe so um marianne thank you so much uh for your time um, on the show thank really you, Adam. Appreciate it. um and yeah I, I hope it was uh as enjoyable for you as it was for me because that was a really good conversation and as i say your openness and kindness and sharing your story has been amazing so thank you very much and we'll see you thank you thank you so much adam thank you thanks for listening to bite britain don't forget to follow us on facebook and instagram at bite britain and also subscribe to us and watch the video version of this interview on youtube so you can get updates on future releases and more importantly exclusive opportunities to win prizes from our awesome guests